Group by and pivot by are some of Excel's newest and most exciting functions. So I've put together not one, not two, but five examples of how to use them from easy to hard. And make sure you stick around until the end for one final bonus feature. Let's get into it. Starting off in level one, here you can see there's some customers and some basic transaction details on each. And you can download this file for free in the video description to follow along. Here, let's suppose our manager is asking us for the sum of revenue by all of these different categories. That's when we'll use the group by function. So we just need to type equals group by. The row fields are basically what we want to group by. In our case, we want to group by the different categories. So control shift down there to get to the bottom, comma. The values are what do we want the aggregation to be about. So it's going to be for the revenue here. Comma, the function is what do we want as the actual calculation? We want the sum and we can just close that parenthesis and hit enter. As you can see, it's giving us the full breakdown of all the different categories alongside the total on the bottom. If we go back up to the formula here, you also might have noticed we had all of these other fields. So you can see we've got the field headers, total depth, etc. But they all have these square brackets, which basically means that they're optional arguments. That means we can just ignore them and close the parentheses like we just did. Awesome. Now moving up to level two. And at this point, our manager might be asking us to include the headers to the result table. So you can see right now we don't have the headers like the category or the revenue. We could copy paste them, but then if we make any changes to the original one, they're not going to update on this side. So instead, a better solution is to use the built in option here inside of group by. After the sum, we just want to add a comma. And under the field headers, we can choose different things. So in our case, we want to choose yes and show. So that's going to be a three. That said, when you hit enter, you'll notice it's not really working properly. We just have books somehow duplicated. So if we double click here again, you'll see it's actually because we haven't selected from this range the actual header. Same thing over on this side. Once we do and hit enter, you'll see that it's working correctly. Similarly to the headers with the group by function, we can also customize the totals down below. So in this particular scenario, we just need to put a comma at the end and it's going to be the total depth. We can choose no totals. So that's going to remove this last total row. Let's give that a try. You can see there that it's completely gone. Great. Now moving up to level three and now our manager wants us to group all of the revenues by customer. So it's going to be a fairly similar group by to before. Whereas the row fields, we have each unique customer. So let's select all of those, including the headers here, comma. The values are all of the revenue figures. So control shift down there, comma. And the function is just going to be a simple sum, comma. And let's also say we want to show the headers there. So we'll put a three and we can close up parenthesis. You'll notice though that the list is actually quite long here. And our manager says we're really just looking for Mike instead. So here's where the group by function gets a bit more complex because you can use a built in filter as well. So really, we're only looking for this particular person, Mike down here. So we can just use the filter feature that it's got. We're just going to put a comma there all the way till we reach the filter array. So put a comma one more time. And under the filter array, we need to select Mike. But where can we find Mike? We can find him within the list of customers. So make sure you select all of those. And when that's equals to in quotations, Mike, that's when we want a match and the answer to be returned. We can then just hit enter here and you can see we now only get Mike's number where if we try to look for Mike here on the table, you can see that this is his value, which is exactly the same as what's showing in the group by. Another feature that's quite similar to filtering is sorting, which is also built into the group by function. So let's actually delete this whole Mike filter here. I'm just going to close that for the time being. We've got the full list, which is quite long, but it would be good maybe to just order it. So maybe it goes from high to low. For that, we just need to go back in here and go to one of these extra optional areas to the sort order. So once that one's boldened, we've got a few different options. We can put a one, which would basically mean sort by the customer here. We can use a two. So that would mean to sort by our second selected column, which is the revenue. So let's try that. Just gonna put a two here. But you'll see it goes from low to high. Ideally, we want it from high to low. So for that, all we need to do is switch the order. So instead of a two, just put a minus two there. So it goes from high to low. 
Now you can see that Bob is the customer that spends the most by quite a big margin, so we should definitely be taking good care of him. Alright, now moving on to level 4 where it gets a bit more tricky. So far we've only been using the sum as the calculation, but what if we also want to find out the sum, the percentage of, and the average revenue by customer? We can do that by combining a few functions. So first we're just going to use the group by like we did before, where the row fields are going to be all of our customers, comma, the values are all of the revenues, nothing different until there. But now for the function, we don't just want one, we want several, and an easy way to do that is with the hstack function. Just type hstack in there, open up the parenthesis, and here's where we want to start using all the different functions that we've got. So it's going to be the sum, put a comma there, make sure you don't have a parenthesis, the second one, let's say, is just the percentage of total. So percentage of, make sure you don't have the parenthesis again. And finally, we can just put the average in here. Let's suppose that these are our three functions. We can just close that second parenthesis. One's for the group by and the other one is for the age stack. So let's hit enter and see what happens here. You can see that now we have the revenue by customer, but we also have what the percentage of the total is and the average too. You'll notice here though that we have these headers which don't look great, so to delete them, we can just go ahead and deselect that header area like that. And this part as well, just hit enter there, and it's looking a lot cleaner now, but for the percentages, we can just press Alt HP. That's gonna convert it into percentage format, and you can see here that Bob has about 41% of all our revenue. The scenario we just looked at works for calculations where we added more than one, but we can actually do the same thing with the row values. It would just be the same group by function, but as the row fields, instead of just selecting one, we can put the age stack in here. So I could say maybe for all of the different payment types and comma, and also for all of the different regions, those are gonna be my two filter criteria. Put a comma there, and now let's say we still want overall revenue figures, comma, and the function can just be the sum. Just quickly here, so I show you what it looks like. You can see it's got the card breakdown for each of the different regions that it's available, grouped by the revenue amounts. Awesome, now before we move on to level 5 and the bonus, if you want to learn Excel and other in-demand data skills properly, you can consider checking out our Data Analyst program. It consists of 5 individual courses and over 300 lessons. First, in Excel, you'll learn best practices for formatting, formulas, and charts. You'll then apply your skills with real-life case studies, from data cleaning to building a dynamic financial model. Then, in Power BI, you'll dive into data visualization and creating interactive dashboards to extract maximum insights from your data. Thirdly, in SQL, you'll work with larger databases, writing SQL queries, and even connecting with applications like Excel and Power BI. Fourth, in Python, we'll start with programming basics and eventually advance to analyzing real crime data in Los Angeles and even building our first regression model to predict housing prices. Finally, in VBA and macros, you learn to automate tasks like generating pivot tables, PL reports, and more. So click on the link in the description below to join our data analyst program to gain the skills you need to thrive in today's data-driven world. Moving up to level 5, and I want to show you a different way to filter by two different columns. So that's using the pivot by function, which I think is a lot more elegant than the group by when we have several fields. So you can see, instead of having just the row fields, we've also got the column fields. So that's a key difference with the group by function. As the rows, let's suppose we choose all of the different regions. So this part right here, comma, and as the columns, suppose I choose all of the different payment types. As the values, I'm just gonna go with the sum of revenue. Then let me close the parenthesis and hit enter. You can see here the key difference is the data is laid out vertically for the rows and it's laid out horizontally for the columns, making it a lot easier for people to read. As for the extra optional features, they're gonna be quite similar to the group by. So you can see we have the total depth, the sort order for both the row side and the column side as well. Finally, as the bonus feature, we've got a grouping trick surprisingly few people know about. Let's take a look here. You can see the column is slightly different, starting with the region. And first, you want to make sure that this has a filter. So just press on this filter button here on the right hand side. And you want to make sure that it's filtered. Let's say we go just for an A to Z. 
From here, if you want to group the totals, so the total for Asia, total for Australia, etc., it's actually quite simple. All you want to do is head over to data and under outline, click on this subtotal button. When you do that, it's going to show this pop-up. So what do we want to group by the different regions? And we want the sum of the revenue for each. So we're just going to untick on payment and tick on revenue here instead. Press on OK there. And you can see we get all of the totals for Asia, for Australia, Europe, and the grand total down on the bottom in just one click. On this left hand side, we've got the grouping feature. So I can press that one here to just see the grand total, the two for the breakdown by region, and three to see all of the data. In fact, if we go back to one of our previous examples, here we've got the level four example. We can also add all the subtotals in a different way here. And that's just by going under the total depth feature. So I'm just gonna put the comma there twice. And here we can see the grand total and the subtotals. Just put a two there and hit enter. You can see that now we have the subtotal for all the cards, for all the PayPal, the transfer to, as well as the grand total down below. So that's kind of a similar feature to the bonus here that we've done. One thing we haven't used in this video is Excel tables. If you want to learn why you should use them, watch this video over here, or you can take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.